Hey guys, welcome to the Dr. Ali Show today. Today we have board certified urologist and men's health specialist, Dr. Justin Human. Justin, please tell us about yourself and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Justin Human. I'm a urologist and a men's health specialist based here in Los Angeles. Um, I focus on men's uh, hormonal health with testosterone, their sexual health, and then their fertility health, so their reproductive health. Um, that's the focus of my practice, and thanks for having me on. Great, great. So Justin, we've got a long list of questions people have been calling in and emailing us. I'm going to ask them to you, and then you tell the viewers how to best treat their conditions. I just had, I had a crazy story over the weekend. I was on call. What happened? Um, uh, I had a guy who came in with priapism. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was pretty rare to see priapism. Well, this guy had, um, he was actually using his friend's bottle of the injectable. Oh, okay. So he didn't know he didn't know how much to do. He just overdid it. Oh wow. He did it on a Friday. Ended up going on a weekend bender and he came he came in last night on a Sunday night after having an erection for almost you know 48, 60 hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that pretty painful though from what I hear? Can you imagine? Couldn't I can't, pee. no. <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't pee. Uh, and how long did he wait before he came to the hospital? Almost sixty hours. What'd you guys end up doing? Um we had to basically drink. He came into your office or he came to the emergency room? Emergency room. room. And then they called you. And they called me. They had to we were to... on call. I was on call. Luckily. <laughs> yeah, at Cedars. So anyways, we had to drain the blood out. You had to drain the blood out, kill the erection, or at least decrease wow. the erection. Yeah, and then make him comfortable. Is he okay? He's okay now, but uh, long term, he's probably, his, his ability screwed. to have a natural erection is going to be very, very Really? Long. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do for somebody like him? Um... Yes. Yeah. Implants? Exactly. If you think about it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that horrible? That's horrible. That's why I never want to do those injections. Yeah. You got to be careful. Is that pretty common though with that? Those injections that people do? You know, in, in this part of Los Angeles, uh, it's more common than Really? You think. Are yeah. people buying it off like the street or from their friends? Yeah. They share it with their friends. Really? Yeah. They don't know how much wow. to dose. They just overdo it. Wow. Short did you end up having to take them to the OR or you did this all in the emergency room? I've sometimes had to take them to the OR. Oh my but God. most of the time you can do it right there at bedside. Oh my God. Yeah. How did he respond when you told him that he never, probably never have an erection again? Uh, you know, like he was it. not happy. Yeah, huh? crying. And how old is this guy? 28. 28! Oh my god. Isn't that horrible? That's pretty horrible. Hey Justin, this guy came to me today. He's saying that he heard something about shockwave therapy for erectile dysfunction. Never heard about that. What is that? Have you heard of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is one of the newer therapies that we have for, for erectile dysfunction. What it is is um, basically it's high energy sound waves. Okay. That we we put we push high energy sound waves into the penis or onto the penis, and what it does is those those sound waves they create micro trauma, so mm -hmm. then you develop new blood vessel growth. And what's an erection? It's more blood, right? So by getting those new blood vessels, you get uh -huh. more blood you get stronger erection. Is this like a one-time procedure or is this something they come in like every week for and get done over and over again? Yeah, so it's six treatments over six weeks. Okay. And, that's the and then some, you know, most guys come in every month or every two months for okay. a single treatment though, a single maintenance dose. It's pretty effective? Yeah, for guys with mild erectile dysfunction, for sure. Really? Yeah. And is it just like a probe that you yeah, probe you, them like an ultrasound? Yeah, you run it along it while the, 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 the sound waves are being emitted. How long does each process, each procedure take? Each, each session? Yeah, you, 10, 12 minutes. Oh, that's it? Yeah, it's quick. No pain? No. No downtime? No. And no risk? And it's cheap. It's not too expensive. Really? Yeah. How much does it go for? In Los Angeles, you know, but roughly $3,000 for everything. For each package. session? No, oh, the, the whole package. package. The whole package. So, do you recommend that to, like, anybody who's having erectile dysfunction or, like, your older guys? Yeah, so you, some, there's some young guy. Okay. Young guys don't generally do it, but guys who are in their 40s and 50s who are, okay. inter who are interested in wow. prophylactically. How long have you been doing this for? Uh, for the last couple of years. It's been, really? The technology's been around for about four oh, or five wow. years. Good to know. Yeah. I'll start sending some more patients. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so we get asked a lot about testosterone therapy and treatment. I get guys who are 20 year olds, 40 year olds, 60 year olds. Tell me, as a hormone and men's health specialist, is there a specific age where men should start getting their testosterone levels tested, or is it really just in individualized according to the person? Yeah, so it's a good question. So testosterone, I mean, it's probably one of the, uh, testosterone therapy is probably one of the best things that, um, guys love it, right, for obvious reasons, because it helps boost up their 
energy, their sexual health, their libido, amongst other things. Um, there's no real age to okay. get tested. Um, but if you're experiencing symptoms of low testosterone, it's important to get evaluated um, at any point. Typically, our testosterone levels start decreasing at the age of 30. But if you're experiencing low, low testosterone, like fatigue, uh, you know, low libido, um, you're not exercising the way you used to, it's a simple blood test um, will tell you whether or not you have low testosterone. So any average guy, 30 years old, coming in for a checkup doesn't need to have his testosterone to levels checked routinely? No. no, unless symptomatic. Okay. Is there a specific age you recommend where guys start checking it, like 40 or over 40, or again, only if they start having like symptoms of low testosterone? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily screen for low okay. testosterone, but just yeah, Got it. if they're having symptoms. Let's say somebody comes in, they're 45 years old, they have different symptoms, fatigue, weight issues, low libido, you test their testosterone levels, they come back low. What are the options out there? What does testosterone treatment look like? Yeah, so typically you want to have at least two uh, levels to confirm low testosterone. Okay. But once you have first thing in the morning, exactly okay. before ten a.m. Okay. Typically before ten a.m. So once you have that, you have two confirmed low levels. Then you discuss with them um, treatment options. So there's really there's two. There's a, there's a big branch here in terms of decision making. If you're interested in having kids, then there's one treatment option. If you're not interested in having kids, there's a whole different set of options. Okay. What is that? So. Um, when it comes to having kids, if you want to have kids, there's ways w which through different medications and pills and injections, we could naturally uh, you basically tell your testicles to produce more testosterone. That's one option. That's for fertility. If you're not interested in having kids, reason being is when you take synthetic testosterone, your testicles shut down. They stop producing testosterone. They stop producing sperm. Um, the options within that category, there's three main options. Um, there's the gels, the daily okay. gels. There's the weekly injections. Okay. And then there's pellets that we can put underneath the skin that lasts for about three months. Okay. Do you do the pellets? I do the pellets. Oh, you do the pellets. Yeah. For my patients, not for myself. That's what I meant. <laughs> that's what I meant. Um, what's the most potent one? Or what's the one that's most popular and people tend to love the best? Yeah, the injections. The injections. Probably, okay. Yeah. What are some of the risks? So uh, testosterone replacement therapy, if done correctly, it's very well tolerated. Um, you know, some of the risks based on um, our data, our science, our scientific studies show it's very, very safe. But um, it, there's some data that correlates it raising your. It doesn't necessarily cause PS, uh, prostate cancer, but it could worsen it potentially. And then the second thing is it could thicken your blood. So there's a risk of if you're doing too much, too much of it, you get uh, increased risk of heart attack, increased risk of stroke. Again, if you're doing too much of it, but if you're getting a normal amount and you're being monitored by your doctor, it's very, very well tolerated, very safe, and in many ways it improves your quality of life. Okay, good to know, good to know. Now, what about these guys you hear about, you know, they're younger, they're in their 20s, even teenagers, and they're doing mega high doses of testosterone, they think it's completely safe. Tell me about that. Um, they don't need to be on it, but they're doing it more for, like, aesthetic purposes, putting on muscle. Yeah, aesthetic purposes, performance purposes. Um, obviously, it's not recommended because at that age, when you're, when you're at that age, your testosterone levels are where they should be for your age. Um, anything above that... Um, puts you in this ultra state of performance for your physique like you were talking about you really bulk up but um, Obviously, it's not recommended to do that because you don't need it uh, But yeah, it is rampant like you okay. said and then what are some of the potential risks for those guys who are younger and doing? Very high doses of testosterone without taking breaks Do you anything to mention or yeah? So I mean the one fertility like we talked okay. about their fertility basically goes to nothing during that time while they're on the testosterone number and then secondly when you come off the testosterone, you're basically you're shutting your testicles down. So when you come off the, te the testosterone, it takes a few months for your testicles to start producing normal testosterone levels. So that period, it sucks in many ways. Like you feel down, you're depressed, your mood may change, you're, you're not energized, all those things. Okay. Uh, you feel weak. Any people that absolutely should not be on testosterone, even if they were good candidates for it? Um, if you have prostate cancer, okay. if you, okay. have, you, know, you don't want to. What if there's a family history of prostate cancer, but you don't have prostate cancer? In, in those situations, I think it's, you know, depending on who you're asking, but uh, generally, it's, it's as long as you're trending, making sure you're, you're following up with the doctor, checking blood levels for your testosterone, your PSA, it's safe. Okay. What about guys who, let's say, have a history of heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, high cholesterol? Yeah, so depending on when uh, any of those events have taken place, but typically for about six months afterwards, you say six months after uh -huh. some kind of a heart attack or a stroke, you tell them no testosterone. After that, after a thorough discussion, uh, you can start guys back on it. Okay, great. Now on the opposite side, let's say somebody comes to you, you screen them, you test them, they have low testosterone. Um, 
but they're not, they ask, do they have to be on testosterone for the rest of their life? Like, is it something that's optional or you just do it for a few months and stop? Do you cycle it? Do you stay on it? What if they don't want to go on it? Do they have to go on it? Well, no one has to go on okay. it. But when it comes to how often you should do it, um, some guys cycle, right? Okay. They'll be on it for two months, they'll take a month off. Bodybuilders, for sure, with the guys who are taking the heavy, heavy doses, they'll cycle. They bulk up during that cycling phase and then they'll take a break where they lean out. Um, most guys, most guys who aren't competitive or in the perform, using testosterone for performance, they're um, staying on it long term. They're taking an injection every week, every two weeks, whatever it is. Okay. Now, the injectable compared to like the nasal spray or the tablet, how do those compare to the injectable? Are they still effective? I know they're not as potent, but are they good alternatives for people who don't like to inject? Yeah, the nasal spray is, you know, it's, um, it's all about, you know, the potency of them, you're right, to a certain extent. For the most part, the levels are, they get to the same level. Okay. It's all about the, the logistics and how comfortable you are doing it. Nasal spray, you have to do it three times a day. It's okay. very annoying for some. Okay. Um, the pills twice a day, which could be annoying, versus an injection once a week. Okay, got it. And the pellets you said are good for three months? Three months. Got it, great. And does it hurt when you get the pellets injected? No, I mean, it's maybe a minor inconvenience. You get okay. a little, small incision, it's all numb. Um, and like I said, the pellets. And how long a process is that? Let's say somebody comes in, they want to get the pellet. 15 minutes at most from start it. to finish. No downtime afterwards? No. And then they get blood work done every three months? Exactly. Okay, and then you change the pellet every three months. Well, or the so. pellet dissolves. And then oh, it dissolves. It dissolves. Okay. It dissolves. And okay. they come back in three months and they get more of it. Can you change the dose of testosterone in the pellet? Yes, it's the number of pellets you put in. Oh, got right. it. So interesting. You could change the number in order to increase the dose. Interesting, interesting. Have you heard of women getting testosterone pellets? For yeah. like increased libido, anti-aging purposes. So some of them do uh, creams and some of them do okay. gels, but pellets, small, small doses of pellets okay. too. Do you do it on women? I don't. Okay. Um, I know there's some um, anti-aging um, physicians who will do it for libido yeah. for women like you're talking about. If a woman came to you and she wanted to, would you, is that something that you see? Do you see women for it or would you prefer not to see women? No, I'm happy to see women for okay. it. But, you know, it's a very, very substantial. Like got it, got it. Got it. All right, another question we get asked a lot is men and thinning hair. So I get guys who come in their 20s, 30s, obviously older, 40s, and they start getting typical male pattern baldness. What's out there? Are there any options out there for guys like that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think everyone could attest to the fact that either they or their friends, somebody's losing their hair. Um, and it's like, like you said, it's very common. Um, options include, you know, we know that like over-the-counter Rogaine's and whatnot. Okay. And there's prescription strength Propecia, uh, which, What's your opinion on Rogaine? Do you feel like it works? Um, I, you know, for, for a lot of guys it does really? work, but the only problem is you have what? to keep using it. Oh, okay, as got it. As soon as you come off of it. Your hair starts falling out yeah, again? All the, all the benefits are where I'm Oh, got it, now. okay. Then you said Propecia. Propecia. There's no over-the-counter Propecia. No, no, Okay, got it. But you gotta be careful with Propecia. We know it causes, there's something called post-finasteride syndrome, Propecia. Okay. Tell us what that is. <laughs> so Propecia is, is finasteride, that's the generic name for it, but. Um, and that blocks the effects of testosterone on your hair falling. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. But you know, testosterone is converted to a particular end, a particular hormone that causes male pattern baldness. So Propecia blocks that conversion. Um, but some guys, especially young guys, are super, super hormone sensitive, and they need that particular hormone. It's called DHT. Um, and when they block that, it, it creates this syndrome, it creates this sequelae of issues. Okay. Both mental as well as uh, psychological as well as sexual like depression or depression sexual dysfunction low libido erectile dysfunction and then hmm. uh, puts them into this you know often in many ways it's pretty bad it's a pretty bad state how common is that percentage wise if you were to guess um in the single digits oh okay in the single digits okay. but the guys who experience it yeah. i see a fair number of them it's it's, it's you know life-changing for many of them it's tough to it's tough to break it is it so it's not reversible so let's say some guy comes in and he starts it and he starts having those symptoms is it likely that he'll go back to normal if he stops, or is it? I, I it's hard think, to say. Yeah, it's hard to say. Okay, got it, got it, got it. All right, anything else other than Propecia or Minoxidil that you can think of? There's Oral Minoxidil. Okay. Oral Minoxidil. This is that's a, over the counter. No it's prescription. It's prescription okay. That, How effective is that in your opinion? Um, there's a, there was a new study that shows actually it's pretty it's pretty effective. It's very well tolerated. Um, that works. I have a lot of dermatology friends who use that a so lot. So less side effects than Propecia. Yeah. Oh wow, interesting. Yeah. And do they see more hair growth or do they see like hair is falling out not as fast? Both. Oh, both? Okay. Do you feel like you have one preference over the other? Um, I think it, if you could attack both, it's best. 
Can you take both, you said? Um, Minoxidil and Propecia? You could. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> well, natural. <laughs> but all right, so you can take both, but the preference is to start with one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other than the syndrome we talked about for people who are on Propecia that can affect their mental health and like erectile dysfunction, any absolute contraindications, any guys that should not be taking either Propecia or Minoxidil, or for the most part, are they pretty safe? I would say as a young guy, try to stay away from uh, Propecia. Okay. If you're a young and guy. once you start Propecia, you tend to have to stay on it, right? Yeah, you have to stay on it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, another popular question we get asked all the time, and these are from guys who come in who are either as young as 20 years old or as old as like 70 years old, which is erectile dysfunction. Now, I know younger guys, you know, it could be a couple of different explanations going on. So let's say, you know, give me an example. I'll give you an example. A 20-year-old comes in, he says he's not able to perform or get an erection. What would you say to them? How can you treat them? Is there options out there to help them? And then same thing after that, let's say it's like a 65 year old guy who comes in, it's probably hormonal. Right. What would you do to, for somebody like that? Well, look, when it comes to erectile dysfunction, it's very easy to fix. You know, I always tell patients, it all depends on how aggressive you want to be. There's pills. Um, and by pills, you mean? Viagra, Cialis. Okay, got it. Those got are the it. most common ones. There's pokes. Those are the injections into the penis for essentially think of like liquid Viagra being injected directly in the penis five, 10 minutes before intercourse. Wow. Gives you a, is that fairly commonly prescribed? Oh yeah. Oh really? And guys will just inject themselves at home? Exactly. And it's easy to do? Easy to do. Insulin syringe needles tiny. Doesn't hurt? Barely feel it. <laughs> Once you break the taboo of injecting your penis. Uh, really? Yeah. What's the risk associated with something like that? Um, if you do too much of it, uh, there's something called priapism. Okay. Where you get an erection lasting longer than four hours. And that's a medical emergency. You have to go to the emergency room for that. But lo as long as you're dosing it correctly, there's no... Interesting. So obviously if you're injecting something that's going to be a lot more potent than taking something like Viagra or Cialis. Yeah. Got it, got it. Great, great. Are there people that are on Viagra or Cialis and it just doesn't work for them? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and they would be a candidate for the injectable? For the injections. Got it, got it. Do you have like a preference or is it just individualized according to the person, how old they are? What's the best option for them? Well, I always like to say, you know, amongst those those three things, so it's the pills, the pokes, and then the prosthesis. That's the that's the okay. gold standard. But those, you know, you always give everyone a fair shot. Work work your way up the ladder. Start with the pills. If okay. Those, if those stop working, go to the injections. If they're not for you, then you can think about the prosthesis. Amazing. Tell me about the prosthesis. Yeah. So. Uh, How common is that? Is that something that's new? Has it been around for a while? Yeah, so Who's yeah. a candidate? <laughs> well, anyone's a candidate for it, right? Anyone who has severe erectile dysfunction, I would say severe, moderate to severe erectile dysfunction, but it's it's, it's a three-piece penile prosthesis. There's uh, Everything's underneath the skin. There's a uh, there's two cylinders that go into the erectile bodies of the penis. That's attached to a pump that sits between the testicles and the scrotum, and then there's a small reservoir in the lower abdomen. Every time you want to have an erection, you pump up the fluid, you pump, the fluid from the reservoir goes into the penis, giving you a strong erection. And it Stays up for however long you need to however stay. Long up. You want. There's, there's two buttons. There's a pump and then there's a release valve. So okay. Whenever you're done, you could be done. You could. Wow. You, could, you just release and the fluid. And then you're done. How long does that implant typically stay in place for? How long is it good for? Does it need to be exchanged every so often? Is it good for the rest of your life? Yeah. So yeah, I would say probably lasts for most men anywhere from 12, 15 years. 12 to 15 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm assuming that's not something that insurance covers, right? You'd be surprised. Oh, it does cover it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Medicare covers it for sure, and that's some, most private insurance is covered too. Now, let's say somebody doesn't have insurance, they're an international traveler, whatever. What would something cost like that a pocket for that? Well, the most expensive part of it is the the device itself. I believe the device is about $15,000. Oh, wow. Yeah, the device wow. itself is quite expensive. And then how long is the procedure? Uh, anywhere from about, depending on who's doing it, but anywhere from around 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, and most guys, within three weeks, four weeks, they're able to start, start using course. it? Yeah. Okay. Downtime, so it's three weeks. Mm -hmm. Any significant pain afterwards? You'd be, you know, no, not really. Not really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any risk of like nerve damage or like impotence afterwards or? No, I mean, it's, it, again, the main risk is infection because you're, you're putting a prosthetic device, okay. uh, a foreign device in that part of your body. And that part of your body, as you can imagine, is moist, full of bacteria and for some. So infection is a big one. So the, okay. the way it's done, when we do it, it's... You know, there's a very voodoo technique that I do, but it's very, very you know, sterile and infection-free. Now, is this something that's pretty common? 
Yeah, or done frequently enough. Oh yeah, I do, oh. I do a few of them a week. Interesting. Very cool. Another thing I get asked about a lot from people is getting a vasectomy done. Mm -hmm. Some people think of vasectomy as like going to the OR, having surgery, being in the hospital for several days, but it's really not. It's something that you do in the office, bedside, right? In the office. And then they just go right home straight from there? They walk home. All right. Downtime, risks? Yeah, downtime usually is, we'll do it on a, I prefer to do it on a Thursday or Friday. Okay. Give the patient the opportunity to just hang out at home for the weekend. By Monday, they're able to go back to work. Two small incisions. Okay. Um, risks. You know, in, in rare situations, uh, potential infection, um, you know, but, and also sometimes what happens is those two ends, even though you're cutting those two ends, sometimes they re the most. So every, you know, six weeks after the vasectomy, okay. they have to recheck the semen analysis, make sure there's no sperm. How soon after can they start engaging sexual activity? Immediately, but, oh, really? uh, well, I would say a few days, but oh, that's it. Just okay. work, they still, they're still not sterile. Oh, wow. Do they have to use any form of contraception for any amount of time afterwards? Until, until they get the semen analysis that proves that. Oh, it. got it. Yeah. Which is typically what, like four to six weeks? Four to six weeks. Got it, got it. Great, great. Um, what about guys who have had vasectomies? And I had this patient the other day. He had a vasectomy, with, he was married, got divorced, remarried, younger girl. Mm -hmm. She wants to have kids. Yeah. Now he wants to reverse the vasectomy. Yeah. Now, isn't a vasectomy, oh, you know, you tell me, is it permanent? Is it not permanent? Like, can you reverse it? What's the success rate? Yeah, you could definitely reverse it. Okay. Um, typically, um, it's all, it depends on how long after the vasectomy. So if you're doing it anywhere between zero and, I don't know, eight or nine years, you almost have a hundred percent success rate. After that, slowly start to dwindle 95 to 90%. Some guys, some guys at 20 years after they try to have a secondary reversal, and those success rates are quite low. Mm. I'd say around 60. Got it. Got it. And then last question, and I get asked this a lot. A couple has been trying to have kids, or they're starting to try having kids. Now we know it can sometimes take up to two years, but men come in and they want to get evaluated before even trying. Is that something that you recommend that men get evaluated even if they haven't started trying to conceive? If so, what do they need to do? And then if they don't need to, like who would be somebody that needs to get evaluated and have their fertility checked? So I would say uh, fertility is, it's, you know, there's a lot to it because it takes two to tango. It's not just one partner, it's two partners. So from a male standpoint, um, I would say one thing, number one, there's two things I would say. Number one, if you are having issues at three, six, three to six months, just get evaluated. And the valuation, number two, the valuation is so simple. All it is, it's a semen analysis. Okay. And you could do these at home these days. Go okay. online, go okay. online, you can buy kits that come to, you come to your house. They have a preser preservative in there that essentially it's the same thing as um, doing it at a doctor's office. So it's just as accurate? Essentially the same oh, thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's the, if you want to get evaluated, just do a semen analysis. If there's anything abnormal about it, then you could see someone like myself, a reproductive urologist. But um, semen analysis is the best thing you can do. Amazing, so it's an easy test. Guys were interested, it's easy enough to do at home or go to see their doctor. In the comfort of your own home. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Doc, anything else you want to talk about? Um, I think we covered it all from a men's health standpoint. Amazing. All right, guys, Dr. Justin Human over at Cedar sinai Justin, thanks so much for coming. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. it.